Gentlemen, this is Harlow Wilcox. The curtain has fallen on the first act of the greatest drama the world has ever seen. The second and, we hope, the last world war. Act two is going on in the Pacific Theater. In expressing our tremendous admiration and gratitude to our fighting forces, we feel that the best support their efforts until complete and final victory by carrying on with our own jobs as best we can. In this case, our job is to bring a few smiles to the home front and do our small bit toward easing the tension and anxiety in the homes of the men who are not here to laugh with us. So tonight, we present the regular Johnson Wax program as our stars go on the air in a spirit of tribute to the stars in your windows. The makers of Johnson Wax products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. of Wistful Vista, having nothing in particular to look backward to, is a very forward-looking community. And with VE Day at hand, the city fathers realized the need for a survey of the housing situation. There wasn't enough money in the treasury for it, but a certain public-spirited citizen has offered to do the job for $50. <laughs> and here is the certain citizen just getting home from a council meeting as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Beaver and his name was Sam. Lost all his teeth so he couldn't build a <laughs> And I had a little turtle that we all called Nellie. Had a shell on her back and another on her tummy tum tum tum. <laughs> oh, hello, McGee. I thought you were attending the council meeting at the city hall. I was, but when they busted up for lunch, I left. Got me a job, too. Making a survey of the housing situation. Pick me up a fast 50 snackers doing it, too. Heavenly days, dearie. You get yourself into more kinds of pickles than Mr. Hines ever heard of. <laughs> oh, yeah? Don't you think I can handle it? Oh, of course, of course. If you have plenty of time to make a survey like that. No, I got plenty of time. I don't have to have it finished till 5.30 tonight. 5.30? Why, it's 1.45 right now. So what? All I got to do is find out how many people in Whistler Vista are looking for places to live. And by the simple process... Of... I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. 79 Whistler Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Who? Oh, yes, he's right here. It's the editor of the Gazette, McGee, hmm. Mr. Edelson. Probably wants to send a reporter out for an interview. Hello, Lee. McGee speaking. What's on your mind, kid? The housing survey? Sure, by 5.30 tonight. Huh? Well, pucker up, brother. I'll be there to see it. Pucker up for what, dearie? He says if I complete the housing survey by 5.30 tonight, he'll kiss the mayor in the front window of the Bonton department store tomorrow at high noon. <laughs> well, that'll be the first interesting window display the Bonton has had for five years. <laughs> yeah. It kills me the way these mugs don't think I know what I'm doing. Now, do you think it's nice to refer to your wife as a mug? Oh, well, I didn't mean you. Well, I'm one of the ones who doesn't think you know what you're doing. <laughs> you are, huh? <laughs> well, you just leave everything to me, baby. I got my ways to do. Hello, Mrs. McGee, Mr. McGee. Oh, hello, Alice. Hi, Alice. Hey, look, lay off the telephone today, will you? I got a big project on, and I might get some important phone calls. Oh, okay, Mr. McGee. If a boy named Pugface Perkins calls, just tell him Alice said no. Said no to what, Alice? It won't matter. Pugface is the kind of a fellow that a smart girl says no to on general principles. <laughs> anyway, if I want to make a phone call, I'll run down to Kramer's drugstore. Oh, well, if you do, Alice, get me a bottle of shampoo, will you please? Oh, sure. What kind, Mrs. McGee? It's called Drawer Off. Drawer Off? <laughs> That's an odd name. Oh, I don't know. It's just forward spelled backwards. <laughs> What kind 
of a project are you working on, Mr. McGee, if it isn't a secret? I'm making a survey of the housing situation for the city, Alice. Creepers, you've got a lot of work to do, haven't you? Yep. I hear it's so hard to get a room in this town, the squirrels are charging two bags of peanuts a night for park benches. <laughs> uh, I got me a system for handling this thing that's so simple. Probably for me. If it's Pugface, the answer is still no. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. McGee. Who? Oh, yes, Mr. Mayor. What, Mr. Mayor? On my housing survey? Why, certainly, Your Honor. And yes, but Mr. Mayor... And yes, I know, Your Honor, but... 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 Look, go fry a pig, will you, Jake? <laughs> Was that really his honor? Yeah, his honor. Very honest guy. Bought his way into the office and paid himself back inside of three weeks. <laughs> Say, uh, Alice, uh, will VE Day make any difference in your job at the airplane plant? Well, not till the other half of the war is over, Mrs. McGee. You see, I figure it this way. If Europe is morning and Japan is afternoon, VE Day is just the whistle blowing for lunch. You're absolutely right, Alice. It ain't fair to the players to go home after the first game of a doubleheader. Speaking of homes, dearie, do you think you'll get to first base with this housing survey by 5.30 tonight? Creepers, he'll have to work awfully fast. Oh, yeah? Well, I guess you've forgotten what a fast thinker I am in emergencies, I guess. <laughs> Remember the time my car got stalled on the railroad crossing? No, I don't. Oh, what happened, Mr. McGee? I'm glad you asked me that, Alice. <laughs> I was going to tell you anyway, but this makes it smoother. <laughs> well, sir, my car got stalled one night on a railroad crossing. Pitch black night. Couldn't see your face in front of your hands. All of a sudden, I hear the midnight express whistling for the crossing. Creaks a flash. I leaps to the ground, tore off my necktie. Why did you tear off your necktie? I got it for Christmas, just waiting for a dark night to get rid of it. <laughs> got it with a bottle of drawer off shampoo. <laughs> Well, sir, I tore off my necktie, and I could hear the roar of the train approaching. I dashes down the track and flags the train down, just in the nick of time. But, Mr. McGee, huh? if it was such a dark night, how did you ever make them see you in time? Oh, I just had a flair for that sort of thing. <laughs> Billy Mills of the orchestra and Tico Tico. What about, Snooky? Well, here you sit doing crossword puzzles, and you're supposed to have a survey of the housing situation in Wistful Vista finished by 5.30. What time is it now? Five minutes to four. My gosh, time sure drags, don't it? <laughs> hey, what's a five-letter word meaning a large, carnivorous, feline animal? 
Tiger. Tiger, eh? Mm, no, 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 no. That can't be right. Got to have a J in the middle of it. <laughs> On account of the perpendicular word is agent. <laughs> Agent is not spelled with a J. It's A-G-E-N-T. Oh, it can't be. I need the T in agent for the first letter of the capital of Massachusetts. <laughs> Trenton. <laughs> Trenton is in New Jersey. It is? Oh, doggone it. That throws the whole puzzle off. I had it almost finished. But how about the housing survey? You just can't sit here oh, and... Oh, not... don't worry about my housing survey, baby. I promise to have it done by 5.30 and I'll have it done. But you're not doing it. Oh, yes, I am. How? <laughs> would you like to know? <laughs> I got people all over this town helping me. And they don't even know they're doing it. This is going to be the easiest 50 bucks I ever... Come in. Well, my goodness, Mrs. Carstairs. How do you do, Mrs. Carstairs? Good day, Mrs. McGee. And, uh, Mr. Mickey. Hi, Carsty. Have a chair. Uh, thank you. Take two. They're small. <laughs> By comparison. Oh, McGee, I don't think Mrs. Carstairs is so large. You know, those mink coats make anybody look lumpy. <laughs> well, Mr. McGee must be wearing his minks under his suit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, if I hadn't fought the Battle of the Bulge any better... Uh, uh, can I brew you a slug of tea, Mrs. Carstairs? <laughs> Thank you, no, my dear. I just dropped in to tell you that our club, the Wistful Vista Musical Appreciation and Save Our Stately Old Elm Trees Club, <laughs> is planning a charity play, and we'd like you to be a member of the cast. What? Me act in a stage play? Oh, why, I'd be scared to death, Mrs. Carsty. Why, no, you wouldn't. What kind of a play are you putting on, Carsty? I thought we would do The Importance of Being Earnest. Oh, yes, by Hemingway. <laughs> well, let me know when you start rehearsals, Carsty. I had a lot of stage experience myself in my younger days. Oh, really? I was not aware that you had had any experience. Younger days. <laughs> My gosh, I had a vaudeville act for several years, Karsty. I and a guy by the name of Fred Nittany from Starved Rock, Illinois. <laughs> Song and dance act. Opened in one with the grass mat, see, for some fast patter, see? <laughs> then into an Indian club routine and a challenge buck. Finished full stage with a trampoline and an off to Buffalo waving little American flags. <laughs> I'll never forget what Variety said about me when they reviewed our act. Didn't you say the clipping, dearie? No, it had a typographical error in it. When they told how I roused up the act, they spelled it with an L. Uh, one of our club members has written a play which we might do. It's a moral lesson on drinking in the English upper classes. Oh, what's the title of it, Mrs. Carstairs? Uh, Lady Chatterley's Liver, I believe. <laughs> Well, do think it over, Mrs. McGee. Good day. Good day, Miss Carstairs. Nice. Great play, that. Hmm. Boy, what an actress she'll make. Be all right in moving pictures, too. All we'd have to do is photograph her through the white of an egg. Well, personally, I think she's very aristocratic looking. Yeah, I like the way she looks down her nose at me. And with her nose, it's like sighting a squirrel rifle. <laughs> Carstairs. What are you going to do about that housing survey? Do? Why nothing? Just wait. Wait for what? For the results. But how on earth are you going to get results just sitting around here? Heavenly days, you've only got till 5.30 and it's almost 4.30 now. Is that all? Oh, I still got time to finish this crossword puzzle. Oh, dear. What's a ten-letter word meaning creature with large horn growing from front of head? How many letters in Harry James? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, boy. Hello, folks. Hey, you going bowling tonight, pal? Nope, I can't, Junior. I'm working on a little job of work for the city. He's making a housing survey, Mr. Wilcox, he says. Oh, come on. Let's go bowling. You can't finish a housing survey in one day. Oh, I got to. I promised the mayor I'd have it finished by 5.30 tonight. 5.30? Why, well, it's after 4 now. That's what I keep telling him, Mr. Wilcox, but he just sits there and he smiles at me like an old Egyptian, um, an old Egyptian. Uh, like an old Egyptian. Yes. <laughs> Look, haven't you tackled something a little big for you this time, pal? How can you make a survey?
survey of a town this size in an hour and a half. Don't underestimate me, Junior. I got resources you never even dreamed of. Oh, the tracks are all closed, so what good are they? What good or what? His racehorses. <laughs> I didn't say racehorses. I says racehorses. <laughs> If I'm smart enough to handle this job without running myself bow-legged, whose business is it? No danger you running yourself bow-legged, dearie. Hmm? You're so knock-kneed that when you walk upstairs, it looks like you just won a Charleston contest. <laughs> That's besides the point. What I mean is I got executive ability. I know how to delegate my work. You suppose the president of U.S. Steel spends his working hours peeking into blast furnaces? Well, maybe not, but... You suppose Mr. Campbell cooks all that soup himself, personal? <laughs> it's organization that counts, Junior. All an intelligent executive has got to do is sit back and tabulate results. Well, unless you get busy, McGee, you'll be able to tabulate your results on the fingers of a boxing glove. <laughs> Besides, Junior, the bowling alley probably won't be open V.E. day, you know. Sure it's open. My cousin runs it, Big Frankie Wilcox. Ah. Uh... And he says he'd keep open on V.E. day if he had to close every other day in the year. Why, Mr. Wilcox? Well, Big Frankie says there's a lot of soldiers and sailors in town that need inexpensive recreation, like bowling. He says he'd feel like a rat slamming the door in the faces of those fellows that made this day possible. And some of them on their way to the Pacific to do some more fighting. He says today they can all bowl free. Well, good for Big Frankie. Incidentally, are all your relatives named Big This and That? All but my cousin Albert. Mm -hmm. He's known as that Big So-and-So. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, sure you won't go bowling with me, pal? He's got to keep his promise to the mayor, Mr. Wilcox. I'm sorry, Junior. Just tell Big Frankie I admire his doing business as usual on V.E. Day. Do the newspapers know how he stands on that? The reporters were talking to him this morning. They're going to. Going to what? Right up his alley. <laughs> so long, kids. <laughs> Hey, what time is it? Uh, 4.45. My watch says quarter to five. That's what I said. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was I doing before Wilcox? Oh, yeah, my crossword puzzle. Now, let me see. 46 vertical. Mm -hmm. A three-letter word meaning an animal that gives milk. Could that be Joe, our milkman? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose referring Look, to... sweetheart, you've hmm? got just three quarters of an hour to make your housing survey. Aren't you going to do something? Do what? Do anything. Go out and survey a house. Survey two houses. How on earth can you earn your $50 sitting there with a crossword puzzle? No, 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 no. Take it easy, kiddo. Take it easy. Oh. I know what I'm doing. I told you I had this thing organized. All I got to do is wait for the results. But what have you done to get results? <laughs> That's the secret of the whole thing. If I was to give away my professional methods, I'd be... Come in. Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Molly. Hello, fossil puss. <laughs> Hi, Aerosmith. What's new in the world of medicine? As if you'd know... Oh, I managed to be conversant with modern medical techniques, my boy. Mm. Did you know that I'd discovered a new method of removing fish bones? My goodness, doctor. How do you do it? Just hand the plate to the head waiter and say, take the bones out of this trout, will you, buddy? <laughs> Save myself many a bad moment that way. Yeah, and if the waiter charges as much for operating as you do, capsule happy, you'd better stick to spaghetti. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I... What's the matter with you, Molly? You're as jumpy as a newsreel of Wilson's inauguration. Well, I don't know, Doctor. I guess I'm just jittery about McGee's job. McGee's job? Don't tell me little Dynamo here has lowered himself to the ranks of labor. <laughs> what short-sighted organization was desperate enough to take a chance like that? I'm doing a job for the municipality, Doctor. Making a survey of the housing situation. And he's supposed to have it done by 5.30 tonight. That gives him about 35 minutes, and he hasn't even been out of this house. If you expect me to fall on my clean-cut features in surprise, I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's a typical McGee enterprise. But aren't you extending your cervical vertebrae a trifle, droopy? <laughs> my what? I said, aren't you sticking your neck out a little? That's what I've been telling Don't you. Oh, it, I'm getting sick and tired of being told that. Just because I got my job systematized, everybody thinks I'm going to be a flop. Don't anybody give me credit for anything? Nobody who ever gave you credit for anything would. He says he's, uh, <laughs> he says he's going to have the results by 5.30, Doctor, but for the life of me, I don't see how he's going to do it. Well, I don't have to tell every Tom, Doc, and Molly how I handle things. <laughs> I got my methods. Look, frog leg... Are you doing this as a labor of love, or are you by some miracle being paid by the city for the project? He's getting $50 for it, Doctor. In cash. $50? Yes. 
That does it. When I think of the acres of human flesh I have to poke, prod, and puncture for $50, and you getting the same stipend for sitting here on your gluteus maximus, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm tempted to hock my stethoscope and start a hot dog stand. Don't do it, fatso, don't do it. You couldn't cut the mustard. <laughs> Is that so? Why, you four flushing little... I'll get it. 79 Wistful Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Who? Oh, yes, he's right here for you, Doctor. Oh, thank you. It's probably that head waiter, Doc, telling you your trout is out of the anesthetic. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yes? Fell off the what? Well, is the body in pretty bad shape? It is, huh? Well, I'll be right over and examine it. Yes, right away. Sorry, folks, I gotta run along. How many days, Doctor? That sounded serious. It is. The filling station says my car just fell off the greasing rack. See you later. <laughs> the King's Men and his rocking horse ran away. I came home early this evening, took off my shoes to rest my feet. I stretched out on the sofa and was just dozing off to sleep. Bang went the bridge slap, down went the table, crash went the china tray. Our Willie couldn't help it, his rockin' horse ran away. Rip, rip went the curtain, wham went the window, crunch went the new buffet. I had to tell his mother, his rockin' horse ran away. Somehow Indians got into our front room. Our cowboy grabbed for his gun and went boom, 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 boom. Slam with the screen door, smashed with the mirror. My head is turning gray. He smiled, then what's the difference? And maybe on Father's Day, he remember when his rockin' horse ran away. Came home about 2 a.m. Maybe it was 4. I sneaked on tiptoe up the stairs and peeked in the nursery door. Oh, he's asleep. Bang with the bricks, slap down with the table, crash with the china tray. Our Willie couldn't help it. His rockin' horse ran away. Rip, rip went the curtain, wham went the window, crunch went the new buffet. I had to tell his mother, his rockin' horse ran away. Somehow Indians got into our front room. Our cowboy grabbed for his gun and went boom, 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 boom. Slam with the screen door, smash with the winner, my head is turning gray. I can't begin to stop him, he does it all in play. Crash with the curtain rod right on my head, I'll never forget this day. Rockin' horse ran away. Now, let me see. 37 horizontal. A five-letter word meaning... McGee. That's it, McGee. <laughs> How do you spell it? Oh, for goodness sakes, please. Huh? Please what? It's 18 minutes after 5. Do you realize that? Certainly. Notice how much later it gets dark these days? Summer will be here before the people in the city... Oh, do... darling, don't do this to me. Huh? you got about 11 minutes to finish your housing survey, and you haven't stirred out of that chair all afternoon. Oh, forget it. I'll have the complete results any minute now. Just relax, kid. 41 horizontal. Uh, Three six-letter words. Oh, I can't stand this. I've got to have somebody to talk to. <laughs> oh, Beulah? Beulah? Somebody ball for Beulah? <laughs> Beulah? Evening, sir. How's everything going, Beulah? Everything's copacetic, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, from the, the shrimps is all shucks and the rice is all fluffy and all... Uh, everything's all right with the world. <laughs> <laughs> we having shrimp curry tonight, Beulah? We having a shrimp curry the likes of which you ain't never flang a lip across, Mr. McGee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, the way I cook rice, make a mandarin close up his cookbook and commit chop suicide. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're the best cook I ever knew, Beulah. Oh, thank you, ma'am. That's what Ira say, too. Ira, that's my intended. <laughs> What's the status quo on your engagement, Beulah? Well, frankly, sir, the status ain't nothing to quo cool about. <laughs> 
Oh. That, that, that little manicures in our neighborhood, she's a tough pocket of resistance, as they say in the newspaper. <laughs> Don't tell me Ira is serious about her, Beulah. Yes, ma'am, at the moment. I can only hope I ever realize sometime that it's going to be happier going through life with a hot stove than a cold nail file. <laughs> By the way, Beulah, how did you celebrate V.E. Day this morning? I went to church, Mr. McGee. I say a little prayer for the boys that do such a good job over there in Europe. Oh, well, that was very nice, Beulah. Oh, ma'am, I wasn't in no mood for no whoops to do. When you got a brother in the Navy like I have still out there fighting in the Pacific, you was prone to save your confetti for another day. Well, it was still pretty good news, though, Beulah. Oh, yes, I ain't denying that. But I just can't help thinking there ain't no dancing in the streets in Manila. Well, maybe law will be over pretty soon and... Ira and me can get married and settle down. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you and Ira going to live when you get married, Beulah? Oh, wait a minute. We, we thought we'd get us a little truck farm and raise our own stuff. <laughs> Tomatoes and children and boys, too, of course. And uh, maybe a few ducks and a couple of cows. Ah, ducks and cows. That's the thing, Beulah. The perfect midnight snack. Midnight snacks, huh? Yeah, quackers and milk. Oh. Quackers and milk, ducks and cows. <laughs> Too bad Beulah didn't say. <laughs> I love that man. <laughs> Twenty-nine vertical, a three-letter word meaning... Uh, McGee, you just have three minutes. Three minutes for a How hot. can you sit there and be so calm? Heavenly days, you promised the city you'd have that housing survey done by 5.30, and here it is, 5.28, and you... My goodness, what's that? What's what? Listen. Heavenly days, it's out in front, McGee, look. What are all those people out there for? Aha, those are my results, kiddo. Quick, how many are there? Why, there's hundreds of them, and they're all looking at our house. Uh, McGee, what's happening? Get a pencil, quick. Help me count them. Check them off as they come up the walk. I see at least 100, 125, 220. More like 325. Swell. Call it 400 in round numbers. Or maybe I ought to sit... Uh-oh. Hello? Oh, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, yeah, it's all finished. Right on time. Yep. You need homes for 405 people. That's correct. Yep, 405. Okay, Jake. I'll be right down to pick up the check. Uh, McGee, what on earth did you do? I just stuck an ad in the paper, that's all. Room for rent, 79 Whistle Vista. <laughs> Call in person, 5.30. Come on, let's get out the back door and go collect that 50 forward to for so long. This is one of the days for which men left their wives and children, their jobs and their professions, to put on uniforms and give their days and their lives to end tyranny and aggression, we hope, forever. But this is just one of the days. There's another day coming, and may it be soon, when we can celebrate complete victory. But to leave our jobs now and quit when the task is only half finished, would be false to the wives and children our fighting men left behind. Perhaps you know that radio programs like this one are recorded and sent to our fighting forces everywhere overseas for their entertainment and to bring them a smile or two from home. This is our job, the thing we know best how to do. So let's all keep going, keep working, and keep faith with the ones who are still doing battle for the things we believe in. Good night. Good night, all.
This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>